So you want to make this bar down here useful for once? Here are some touch bar basics. 2020, let's go. All right, so today I'm gonna to go through something that everyone seems to hate, and it's actually the touch bar. I have a 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro, and the touch bar is on the 16 inch as well. Everyone kind of you know, looks at that and they kind of look at it once or twice when they get the system and then they never use it again. At least that's my experience. A lot of people don't know what it's for, what it does, or what are the basics. They just don't tend to learn how to use it. Now granted, it's not something that I can, again, I, could I live without it for sure, but is it something that I want to use to my advantage if I can? Yes. So in this video, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to go through number one, the basics of how to actually use it, just really basic stuff. Then I'm going to show you a couple more intermediate stuff you know, to use it, and then at the end I'm going to show you a couple applications that kind of make it useful for me, and maybe not for you. I mean, I don't know. We'll see if you guys agree with me. But they make it useful for me a little bit more, and I can actually stomach it. So at the end of the day, it actually does become a positive for me. I know that the, a lot of people want the function keys back there, and there's a way to get them up there. I'll show you that too. So stay tuned with the video. I want to go ahead and just kind of put a little bit of light on the actual touch bar here, and let people know, you know, can you use it? Yes. Is it hard to use? No. Just use it basically, you know, find out what the basics are and you're going to get some advantage from it. Um, I know, you know, people probably know how to change, you know, the, the display brightness and things like that. I'm going to go a little bit deeper in this video. So let's get into it. You guys know my stuff. I try to save people money and try to give them some good tips here and there. So let's go. All right, so here's the control strip right here, and I want to show you some basics. On the left-hand side, from this arrow, you can see here, all the way over here, this is your app. They call it the app control over here, so from here to here. And then from this arrow this way, they, what they call that is the control strip. Control strip does things like brightness, sound, you know, takes your sound and stuff out, so you can see that here. Now, if you want to expand this, there's only four buttons that are shown here. You can click this little arrow here. It'll expand them, and you can see brightness, and it does, um, you know, sound and stuff, and play and pause and stuff, and, and everything else. So that's how you get that. If you want to go ahead and get rid of that, you click the X. That'll go back. This, again, is your app window, which I'll show you. If you have apps that do stuff inside of here, it'll show up over here on the left-hand side. So just remember those two things right now. Those are pretty, pretty important. Um, so what you can do too, so this will actually fade away if you don't use it, then you just click it or click some kind of key, it'll come back. So if you see that fade away right now, don't worry about it. All right, so now we're gonna do a couple of things. So if you wanna actually go ahead and edit this, you know, what's in this window over here, which is called, again, the control strip. What you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and you wanna go up to your Apple icon, click on system preferences right there. Then you wanna to go to keyboard, see it there? And then down here it says customize control strip, then you wanna click on that. So what that's going to do is it's going to bring up this option here. And if you look down here, these are now wiggling or they're moving around. So you can actually take any of these icons and just drag and drop them. And you can remove these the same way. You can basically just drag and drop them into here as you need them. So if you want to change something out, for instance, you know, if you don't want Siri, you can get rid of that. Um, so I can click that one and move it back up here. It's kind of crazy. Look at that. It just goes right up there. And then let's say I want something like sleep, which I use a lot more right down here. Take sleep and I'll drag it into here. And then I can put my computer to sleep now if I want to just by clicking that button. So obviously that's pretty cool um, how you can do that and uh, you know we'll go from there. But that's basically how you're going to modify the buttons over here. If you want to modify more buttons because there's only four here, again click this little button there. It expands everything and you can see now it expands this whole window here and it gives you a bunch more options as well. And you can kind of drag and drop these things out of here. You know if you, if you scroll down you see how they light up then you can just hold the button and, and move them out of here. So it's very easy once you do it. Just pick what you want and that's how you modify you know the control strip. All right, so if you want to get to your function keys now, you'll notice that this is actually blank up here, and you have, again, your control strip over here. So there's an FN key in your keyboard. It's in the lower left-hand corner. You can't see it here because of my camera, but it's down here, down this way. Um, it's a physical button. If you hold that down, what you notice is the actual uh, function keys come back up. So it's F1, F2, F3. So if you need to get to your function keys, you can basically hold that down, and it's going to show it, you know, how to do it. You can also do a search. I'm not going to show you here, but you can change something. Um, there's a way to do it where you actually have that state like that permanently, but it's more of a, a modification. So you can look that up, but it's definitely possible to do that if you need it. All right, so here's another tip too. Um, if you're an AirDrop user, well, you can do a couple things with the touch bar. It makes it just a little bit easier. So if you have Finder, you have to have Finder open, but if you open up Finder, I just have one file in here. <laughs> Fairly new iMac, but anyways, you can see a file. So you click, highlight the file and watch down here. If I highlight, just click on a file in Finder. You can see down here, it's got a couple things going on. And it's basically got this middle one. If you click that, which is gonna be share, you can see that it pulls up mail, messages, AirDrop, or notes. So you can actually then click AirDrop, 
and uh, it's going to tell you exactly what you're doing there and stuff like that. So I'm not going to do that right now, but you can see how that that's actually going to be something where you can put files really quickly into mail, into AirDrop, or anything else just by using the touch bar down here, if you can see that. So that's another tip if you want to go ahead and just do AirDrop really quickly. Now, if you do screenshots, one thing that the actual uh, touch bar might help you with, you know, obviously you know how to do a screenshot, at least you should. Um, you know, so what, if let's say you're just going to do just a basic one, we can do Shift Command 4. So Shift Command 4, and it's going to create that. Now, look down here what happens. The one thing that I like to show people is when you do this, you know, it usually saves it to your desktop. But you can go down here and you can click on this right here and it'll actually let you save it to your desktop, your documents, your clipboard or preview. So that's actually a good CM down there. So when you do that, you can actually save to. It'll let you save it to a specific area right there. You also have the other commands that you would have over here that you would have at the bottom of the screen. But um, that's a good way just to save you know, screenshots at different places. If you need to, you can go ahead and do that really quickly using the touch bar. All right, so one thing I want to go over is on some apps it allows you to actually customize the, the touch bar for the app, and some apps it does not. I'll show you that. And it's, it really depends on what app it is. But let's just go into Safari right now. And if you click on Safari, what you want to do, so if you're basically going to go into an app and see which, you know, which apps you can actually modify the touch bar, which ones you can't, you want to open the app up, you want to go to View, and what you want to look for is Customize Touch Bar. See it right there? So the Safari lets you do it on this one, and I'm going to click on that. That's going to bring up all these buttons down here, and then I can, you can see down here it says Search for a Website Name, and then it also says has the back and front buttons. But if you look here, it has a whole bunch of different options I can drag in here. Sidebar, Share, Tab Overview, New Tab, Home, History. So you can get all that stuff inside your app window over here. And Safari lets you do that very easily. The weird thing is, is if you go to another app, actually another Apple-owned app, a lot of the custom ones that you buy or you get from you know, third parties actually have that built in. All right, so once you're in iMovie, if you go up to View up here again, you can notice that it doesn't actually have that same, you know, it doesn't have the same information there to change the touch bar. So the, in iMovie, you can't actually change the touch bar, and you can in Safari. A lot of your apps are going to have that, but again, this is going to have built-in, you know, app controls. So if you look down here, I can split a clip. It's going to have play buttons down here and stuff. But that's actually not, mo you can't modify this down here. Well, you can in Safari. So you always have to go to View and then look to see if you can actually modify the touch bar. And if you can, it'll be in there under that view command or the view drop down. So check it out in individual apps and I'm sure there's a list somewhere but that's actually so if you, if you can't find it you can't change it. It's, all, it's like pre-built. Apple wants you to only use what they have in there. It's kind of crazy but that's the way it is right now. One thing just to realize too, it's a really simple tip here is basically you know you can click on this over here let's say the, the volume and you can see there's a slider. Um, to change the volume, but if you just hold it down and just move your finger really quickly, you don't have to pick your finger back up. So basically you just have to click on it and then just start sliding without actually doing two steps. It's a stupid kind of a little tip that I like to show people, but it's you know, a lot quicker than having to click twice. All right, so I wanted to show you a couple different uh, applications really quickly. The one thing that I always want built into the touch bar is I want to be able to show the dock in the touch bar. Why not? So that you can have the dock down here, see it down here. You can have that dock show up in the touch bar. So one application that allows you to do that, it's called, um, it's basically Puck. It's P-O-C-K dot dev. Be careful what you say there. Um, anyways, it is in there, and it says Display Mac OS Dock and Touch Bar. It's a free app. It's not in the App Store, but you can get it. It's basically in development, but it's, it's one of those kind of uh, free ones you can get. And a lot of people use it, but it's got a lot of different options here. And I'm going to show you here in a second what it looks like. But realistically, it's something that allows you to put, just kind of mimic your, um, you know, the, the dock that you have down here in the touch bar. So you can basically hide this on your screen, and then you can just use that on the touch bar and not have to ever go back down here and pull this back up. It's really actually pretty nice. And I'm going to show you how that looks here. And this is all there is to it. So if you look at the touch bar, it mimics the dock exactly. So whatever is in the, in the dock is going to be in the touch bar. Very simple. All right, and there's one more app that's very similar to that, and it allows you to do not just basically your dock, but it's actually called Touch Switcher, and I think it's like five bucks. Um, again, this is you can just look up Touch Switcher, and it basically says use Touch Bar to switch apps. So this is the only difference between this one and the other one is this one actually will allow you, if you can see it here, it allows you to put any app you want in here, not just from the dock. So you can actually just drag and drop all your different apps that you want in here, and so it's a little bit nicer. It, you know, it's four ninety nine and buy it again. It's it's it, I think. This one might be on the Mac Store. It says download on the Mac Store. So go ahead and check this one out. This is this is the icon here, but it allows you basically to take any app that you want and throw it in the touch bar so you can launch it more or less. And uh, it's just, I don't know why that functionality is not totally built in, but anyways, you can go ahead and grab this as well, and that's a great addition.
<laughs> All right, so what did you think? It's not too bad. So I just wanted to go through some basics of the Touch Bar in 2020. You know, how do you get some use out of it? How do you actually find some good use for the Touch Bar? When a lot of people just kind of ignore it. I mean, they almost wish that the buttons were back there. I kind of, you know, I'm in between. I mean, I find these things pretty useful. At the same time, I also, you know, maybe hope a little bit that the buttons came back. So you let me know what you think. If there's any other good tips you can do, put them in the comments. I'll definitely add them to maybe a video coming up in the future. I just wanted to show people some of the basics here. You know, my channel is all about, you know, a lot of Apple products, a lot of PC products, I guess less PC than Apple. And then I do a whole bunch of kind of testing of hardware and stuff, and this is no different. So let me know what you think. I mean, this is something that I kind of have learned to like a little bit more than I guess I used to because I, you know, went through these little tips and I found out how to use it a little bit more. Now, is it something that I can live without? Yes, but at the end of the day, it's there. So why not use it to the fullest? Anyways, check out my channel if you can. Subscribe, hit the like button. I'll talk to you soon. I make a couple videos a week. Peace.